Praise the Lord, dear friends. Thomas Matthew the Fourth coming to you once again live. I was saying I like good technical excellence. I believe in that. In fact, I got a word, prophetic word one time about technological excellence in the prophetic office that I stand in. And we're, we're doing that. We've released words to dozens of countries, probably more than 70 countries of the world, maybe 80 countries of the world, where God was speaking particularly to a nation. I'll give you a few right now. Cuba is going to have a, a, a breakthrough in the realm of coming back into becoming a democratic society. That will really happen. Uh, in Uganda, there's going to be exposure of this oppressive uh, thing that's been going on. And someone's going to break through in that place. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm looking forward for it to happening. For it happening. And it's not going to happen in five minutes, obviously, but it's going to, it's going to be a, a thing that that nation will be known as a new nation, not for what has happened before with dictatorial regimes. Venezuela. I'm praying that it, capitalism and democracy get reintroduced there. And this guy that's the, I uh, forget his name now, probably is good, I forget his name, I won't say his name, I kind of slipped my mind. I know his name, but I can't remember his name right now. The guy that's currently the dictator there, you know, acting like he's a, a good social communist, socialist communist, he uh, just, you know, is a complete fraud, a complete fraud. Um, friend of mine who's a very prominent uh, musician uh, from the Latin America, Latin, Latin world, that's Latin America, see we're too American, so we see Latin American, African American, no, no, let's get out of it, from the Latin world, he, he just telling me he was just in Puerto Rico, and the corruption that's going on there, oh my God, it's terrible, and um, he, he found a picture of uh, the, the, the guy, whatever his name is, the guy, his name is, is evaded my mind right now, which is good. I, don't, I, shouldn't say, I shouldn't say names. He was having this big dinner in, the, in the, one of the most expensive restaurants in the world that they say costs about $1,500 per person just to eat. $1,500. How much is that in shillings? That's 150,000 shillings. So for one person, not for the whole bill, for a group. <laughs> Per person, so if you have four people, that's 600,000. If you have uh, six people, that's 900,000. If you have seven people, you broke a million, if they're all ordering this stuff. And they're sitting there drinking and smoking cigars and having all this stuff. And I thought, here's the guy where his people are starving. That, that's just wrong, you know? I don't know. The Lord has just stirred me up the last couple of days. I feel this thing about the fear of the Lord. I'm reminded of the scripture in, in, in Psalm 25, I think it's 13 or 14, Psalm 25, 14, I think it is, says, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. In Malachi 4, there's a verse that talks about um, the uh, people having a conversation and the fear of the Lord was with them. And the Bible says also in Proverbs that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And then Isaiah 11:2 says one of the attributes of the Holy Ghost is the fear of the Lord, which brings you close to him. It's a good thing when God begins to shake and quake you and awake you. <laughs> shake, quake, bake, and awake. Ah, woo, glory to God, that's the Holy Ghost. Shake you, bake you, rake you, you know, wake you up, shake you up, stir you up. It's a good thing. I believe that's going to happen to people all over the world, man. We're going to see real powerful servants of God come forth, fearless people, because we've entered into another Season. It seems like this chaos that's going on in the world now is like a kind of like a test run for what will come in the future. But after the rapture, because you know, 
when this thing finally hits, where there's going to be tribulation and Armageddon and, uh, you know, the Antichrist and rule and all that. I'm not going to be here for that. I'm not going to be around that time. I'll be in glory with Jesus and all of the people that went before us and the angels and everybody else. We're going to be having a great time. So, but, but um, this, is, this is a good thing in a way to shake people up. Yeah, it's a conspiracy. Yeah, it's the devil. Yes. This stuff was made in a lab. This stuff was, was made somehow. It's manufactured somehow. All kinds of lies and hypocrisy, fear spreading, you know, chaos, panics, you know, being stirred up by the devil. It's really terrible, but it, it, it kind of can work in a positive sense. Not that it's positive at all, because it isn't. To really get people to start to think about the time we're living in and how much time we have and what we need to be doing. I heard the Lord say also that the nation of Bolivia, is something I prophesied over Bolivia a few years ago, and it happened. Several years ago, it happened. There was a, a regime change, a political shakeup. It's again a bit vague from my mind right now, but I, I'm hearing the resurgence of the word again. There's something great gonna happen in the nation of Bolivia. South American nations and Central American nations are going to undergo great, great advancement, great shake-up, a great shaking loose from, from corruption, and it's really going to begin to take place. Now, this thing also is happening in Kenya, where God said he's releasing an anti-corruption movement. I mean, that's really, uh, that's really happening. I don't want to say too much about that right now, because we'd probably be here till tomorrow just talking about a few of the things that's going on. But it's, uh, it's good, it's positive. But it's very, very negative and very horrific for the people that are involved in such things. Because not only will they be disgraced, not only will they lose what they had, but they're going to uh, have the ultimate collapse, which is the judgment of God when they don't make it to the good side of things in eternity. You know, you can feel such a disgust and a distaste. It's almost to the point of like sheer hatred uh, for foolishness. I, I don't want to talk about for the person because people are going to argue, say, well, you're not supposed to hate anybody. Well, help yourself. Help yourself. You can look at someone who's disgusting and you're not supposed to feel, you feel love from God because you hope that you can pray for them and they could turn around, but in the state they're in, and if they stay that way, it's not good. There's no favor there. Some lady wrote on one of my pages, uh, I, just, I just unfriended her and got rid of her out of my, out of my list. So I, I can't have a connection with someone like you if you're that ignorant. Misquoted all the scriptures. We were talking about Buhari in Nigeria. That's another thing that has to change. You know, they come up with this religious jargon saying like, well, you know, God appoints everyone who's a leader. Says who? You think God, listen, they, but these people don't know this, that in 2015, before that uh, last presidential election in Nigeria, the Lord said this, that he wants a Christian leadership in the nation of uh, Nigeria. He doesn't want an Islamic leadership. He wants a Christian leadership. Now, it turns out that the vice president is a Christian guy, but I really wonder, I've asked some people, and I really wonder if he'd be the guy to really bring it forward, because you need someone that's like bold as a Donald Trump to rise up in some of these African nations where they don't care, they're going to change things. Someone says, well, they'll be killed and there'll be so much bloodshed. Hey, whatever, there's so much be killing and bloodshed going on now. I don't see how that would be very much different because this, the solution would be brought. Remember when President Trump released the missiles at the Baghdad airport and blew up the Soleimani guy from Iran, and the whole world went crazy and said it's going to start World War III. Where's the World War III? 2.1, 2.2, 2.5, 2.7. Where is it? It doesn't exist. 
because those people got the next word that came from our president. Bless his darling heart. By the way, I feel the anointing. Wow. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Today is a, a national day of prayer in America. President Trump has called it a national day of prayer. We're joining in on, on this day right now, on this Sunday. We're joining in with, uh, with everybody to be praying over America and over the world. What a guy to stand up, and now he's got his hand up like this, like he's pointing up at the Lord, and his wife's standing there all decked out, and she's praying, and Mike Pence is there, and he's speaking in tongues. Come on. When did we see that happen? No wonder the hatred. If you wonder the hatred against the man, it's because of what he's standing for, and because he's standing for God. That, that shows you how far gone things really were before. When you had a wicked man, someone that's uh, an antichrist, kind of person in, in, in position of, of uh, control, you don't see the evil so much because they hide it very well. They hide it. But then bring the Holy Ghost to the forefront, woo, all hell breaks loose. Terrible. But it shows you that something good is happening. I'm very excited about it. So the next word from the president to Iran was, okay, you chanting, screaming, going crazy, you're going to retaliate. Uh, here's what's going to happen if you do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up to 52. They said our military now has 52 strategic places where we can hit you, and we'll do it in honor of the 52 peop hostages that you had back then, the 52 hostages the Iran hostage crisis, many, you know, way, way, way back, way back when. So in honor of that, we will absolutely cripple your country. What do you think? You want to take a move? They went, they backed up and said, hey, uh, we can't take this on. But the funny thing is that there are people that talk about the end time stuff that includes Iran, Iraq, like it's Gog and Magog, you know, from uh, Ezekiel. And then Russia and China, the evil, you know, will come together in this pact. And that's for later on, okay? I I'm not disputing that at all. I mean, I, that probably will happen around the time when it really, really, really is going to get to the end, end, end time of, end of times. Because how is the scripture going to be fulfilled where... The blood is going to be up to the tops of the rivers and up to the here of men as they're walking in it. How does, how does blood run so much? I mean, that's not even thousands of people. That's, that's hundreds. It's horrific to think about. It's scary to think about, it, isn't it? I don't know. I feel, I feel shaken up. I feel like this thing, we, we have to shift and go all out, all out in the realm of warriors. And I, the Lord had me just uh, pick up another domain. I'm going to begin to build a website behind that to uh, raise up a movement of people to join as prayer warriors, as other preachers and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and apostles and uh, kingdom people that want to pray. You know, get, get a movement going on because we can't just be sitting down having church. I'm appalled also at the state of people that want their cultural thing like there are certain songs, like let's say in Kenya, excuse me, your Swahili songs, the way people talk, the quirky expressions, the kind of preaching, the kind of same old, same old, and that's kind of like the mold that you fit in. But what about when God sends the man to bring truth, like, like Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 to 13? Make a note of that, you can read that later. I, Isaiah chapter 46, verses 9 to 13, talks about a man sent from a faraway country. And then Isaiah 55, verse 4, finishes the thought. Isaiah 46, verses 9 to 13. And a few chapters later, you can read that. Okay, take time to read that. It talks about also the, the, the eagle, the bird of prey from the east, which is the Egyptian eagle. I had them land at my house in East Africa. They, they landed. 
these Egyptian eagles, and, and we knew they were because they have a cer certain kind of colored feathers, like different colors, like one feather is one color, then the next feather is another color, and when they put them all together, they make this amazing pattern, and when they fly, oh, I saw them when they take off. God, I feel the anointing so strong here. They, they took off, and then you see like the colors of the things, you know, together like that, you know that's an Egyptian eagle. It was a prophetic sign came to the house. Also, they came to the meeting place where we were having a big event. We had a couple of thousand people there in the, uh, the, the big hall right next to the central business district of Nairobi. And the place was full. We had a couple thousand people in there at my event. Okay, it was my event. And uh, that's how it was. Then um, uh, the, the Egyptian eagles flew outside the window they were flying around in a circle two of them and they came several times and I saw them and they were like "Woo!" and I looked at the colors on them and I know the markings how they the Egyptian eagles this was a prophetic sign but then in Isaiah 55 verse 4 the prophet Isaiah had the had the uh, conversation finished when he said this it said a leader and a commander I make you among the people now that's God talking to me as his prophet, as his leader, as his servant. That's the word of the Lord to me. Isaiah, can you believe Isaiah prophesied to me uh, nearly 3,000 years ago, around 3,000 years ago, however long it was. How many centuries before Christ was Isaiah? Let's do a study on that. At least, it was at least 700, probably more. So two and a half to 3,000 years ago, there was a prophetic word spoken to me. A leader and a commander, I make you among the people. Watch this. Here's the proof now. Here's the proof that is to me. It said, and a people that you do not know, God will use you to call them into order. That's the real proof right there because, and then you see the, the other reference out of the mouth of two or three. It didn't say it had to be three. It said two or three. The scripture says out of the mouth of two or three. Three is good, but two is also okay. It didn't say it has to be three. It said two or three. There's two right there. I'm sure there's another one if we really look. Through the scripture, we'll find somewhere else that kind of co correlates with all that. Not that we're looking to prove the point, because we already have the two in the same chapter, in the same flow. You know, when the Bible was written, when Isaiah was written, he didn't make, I'm going to do chapter 46 now. I bet he, he may never even have thought of that. It was people that went through it and, you know, made it cha this many chapters, 66 chapters, and this many verses per chapter, okay? I don't think they were trying to write, like, to, to know the uh, denotation of each verse and the numbering thereof. So 46 to 55 is only nine chapters. That's, like, maybe in the same flow, maybe in the same visitation. He was, however, he was writing it, bless his heart. Did you ever see the old Sanskrit, you know, the old things that they used to write on? Can you imagine that? And they took that and then got this logos. My Bible is right here. They, 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 they got the logos from that and took the technological advancement of putting it into actual print. And I have one of my books here and another reference book here in my Bible. We see how things have been... Uh, by the way, this is going to reprint Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. Y'all need to get a copy of this. This is phenomenal, 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 phenomenal. So well written, so well laid out, so easy to read and get principles and understand. And you need to get a copy of this we're going to be announcing when this is going to be released next again. We've, we've done several, several printings of this and the thousands of copies. And they've all gone. Some I gave away. But most all of them were bought, but I'd give a few of them to a few leaders, you know, that I like. I want to sow the word into their life. So we're going to go to reprint with that. You can get a hold of it. There are many other books that we're in the process of writing. They're going to be coming out. Phenomenal. So could you imagine if he was chipping away into a <laughs> something, making the markings or writing with some pen on a, animal skin, you know? They didn't have paper and printers and copiers and scanners then, did you, did you notice? So he, he had to like write it somehow by hand. So he might have been in the same time of visitation where he 
wrote chapter 46, which we have as 46 now, and 55. But it said, a man will be sent from a faraway country. Well, that's America to Africa. And then he finished the point, says, a people you do not know. My God, you're right, I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. That's a joke. Someone will get it later. I still wonder how much I know, I know y'all, with all the quirks and craziness and evil that goes on. Double-mindedness. Come on, I don't want to go you know, off on this uh, thing here, but prophetically, the Lord's going to want to straighten a lot of this stuff out. You need to be a truth person. You know, the Bible talks about truth. Let me, let me give you something about that right now. Hold on. Wow, I just, look at that. I just found it right like that. I just did that, and there it was. Ooh, that's the Holy Ghost, saving time. God knows what you need. If I had to turn all these pages in between, like four, 20 pages, I just, I just stuck my finger here, and there it is. Ha! Oh, that's a miracle. That's a sign of wonder. Truth is the most powerful thing on the earth because it is the only thing that cannot be changed. So if it can't be changed and it's the actual thing that it's the actual thing that makes you free, then why wouldn't you want to be a truth person? Sanctifies you. The word is truth. I am the way, the truth. It's part of Jesus' nature. He doesn't have truth, he is truth. The commandments of God, Psalm 119, verse 151, your commandments are truth. Psalm 119, verse 142, your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is the truth. 1 Kings 17, 24, the woman that Elijah encountered, the prophet encountered, said back to him, said, I, you know, now I know, man of God, that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. Why? Because it came to pass. I had a young man write me the other day, and I wrote back one word answer. I wrote nonsense, exclamation point. And I told him, prove it. Then I well, try to write something loving, lovingly. So he wrote a message like it's a prophecy. And then guess what he did? Like when I wrote nonsense, he wrote back again and he replied, he, he's sorry for the message. I thought, well, that wasn't a message from God if you're sorry about it. Someone, someone, he said, he's sorry for the message. I thought, how can you say sorry for the message? If it was a message of God, you could say, well, I stand by it because I, I, I felt this and I'm releasing this. And if it happens, we'll see. So I wrote this. I said, for years and years and years, son, I've been seeing people from Kenya putting out prophecies saying that they're the word of the Lord, a, a vision from God. And it's all kinds of death and destruction and pestilence and mess and what. And I just wrote, I said, I've, I've seen that most of it has never come to pass. In fact, almost all of it. In fact, practically all of it has, has not come to pass. So I don't have to listen to this one. Another one about buildings collapsing and, you know, people dying some chemicals there where people are dying. I thought, well, let's see, let's wait and see. So I said, I said, we'll wait and see. That's what I said, we'll see, all right? There's someone on the net right now that's also doing that. Another person from Kenya, crying, getting all emotional and all that. I know we're in a time of war. I know that terrorism threat is real. It is, of course it is. I'm not stupid, I'm also the prophet. No, I'm not also, I am the prophet. They may also be. <laughs> I think people know that I'm a prophet. I think, I think it's kind of obvious. So the same person said that on such and such a date, in such and such a week, I believe it was in the middle of the year, a couple of years back, that this would happen in this certain city. There'll be this kind of disaster, whatever. It never happened. I told people, ask me, what about this? What do you think? I said, okay, wait till after the last date, the next day after the date that they said it would happen, and then we talk. How about that? So I'm not cynical. I'm not saying, ah, that ain't God. You better be careful when you say, ah, that ain't God, because you don't like the way it's said, or you don't like what was said. You better be careful, because it could be God. So let's wait and see. Now, four and a half years before 
September 11, 2001, it was in the middle of 1997, the month of April. I was driving in Washington, D.C., and I had a visitation as I was driving. This was in April of 1997. The Lord spoke to me three things. He said, there'll be a great disaster in the city of New York. I saw the vision, then he continued to show me more about it. I won't take time to go the details about that. But, and he said that two congressmen in America would be thrust out because of some corruption being exposed. And, and then he said, um, Bill Clinton would be impeached. Impeach, the, the nation will cry out to impeach Bill Clinton, the president. This is before that process happened. If you look at the dates and the time, I think it was 98, maybe, when it all went down. But this was in 97. So I was shocked. I was like, wow. And sure enough, he was impeached. The two congressmen did go. One of their names was James Trafficant, I believe his name was. Uh, I think he was convicted of some things, and yeah and another one, and it happened. And then this thing about New York, the greatest disaster that would ever be, explosions, thousands of deaths, buildings falling. I saw it in the vision, I said it. People looked at me like they didn't know what to do with me. Why, how could you say something like that? Well, I, I didn't say it, it wasn't me. It wasn't me, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. It was God that spoke. Now if that never happened, hey, I. I should say sorry, thought I saw, didn't know, but how do you see something so vivid with so many details? And that's come to pass. And this is way before I ever came to Africa, went to many other nations of the world, 33 countries of the world now, 32, I think I just been to my 32nd country, which was the nation of Rwanda. That was number 32. Next, wherever I go that I haven't been to before will be number 33, and that's a good number, isn't it? 33 is a good number. Jeremiah 33 says, call upon me and I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know yet. 33 was the number of Jesus' years before he departed and then was resurrected. Powerful number. So I'm excited about Nation 33, whichever one that will be. I'm invited to so many other countries, Malawi, Ghana, that I've not been to before, uh, Madagascar, I think it is, or is it Mozambique, one of them, and uh, other ones in Asia, other ones in the Middle East, other ones in Europe that I've not been to. I've been to several nations in Europe, but not all of them. Eastern Europe, I've never been. Mostly Western Europe and a few other countries in there that I haven't been to yet. Other places in, in uh, South America and Central America, the Latin world, God said it's opening to us. It has opened to us. And phenomenal things are going to happen there. There's a, there's a woman that came on the net, and it's just, this, this video just popped up and said she's a prophet. And I started to listen. And what she described was exactly something that I was looking at lately. I mean, it was so precise and so accurate. It was God that had me find it. So I said, now that's a real prophetic voice right there. You know, it's going to be, even when it doesn't make sense, it's going to make sense eventually. And uh, half a year before, in 2007, the Lord showed me violence break out in Kenya. It was bad. I saw many people dying, all kinds of fires and destruction and murder and slaughter. I saw it in a vision. And I told uh, Raphael Tuju, who was the foreign minister, he was the minister of foreign affairs at the time, had a meeting with him. He, he then went to Mwai Kibaki, the president of Kenya, and told him everything that I said, and they were all amazed. But some of the things, they didn't know what to do until I saw him again in January of 2008, when the violence was hot and going on in Kenya, people were dying by the minute. And he came up to me at a hotel. I was having a buffet dinner, and... Uh, he was, put his hands on the table, looked at me, he says, Hi, uh, man of, prophet of God, do you remember me? And I looked at him, I thought, <laughs> I'm trying to get, I said, boy, I felt bad for a minute. I had to do like, da -da -da -da, like, you know, double take, 
get, you know, catch my, uh, my subconscious memory there. And I said, oh yeah, how you doing? And he, he said his name again. I said, thank God you said your name again, gotcha. This is the Minister of Foreign Affairs. You know, but you, I tell you, it becomes a blur sometimes when you're so busy and you're seeing so many people and doing so many things, you know what I mean? So I said, wow, it's so good to see you. And he looked really like nervous. His eyes were twitching. He looked, his face was expression. He looked like a little bit, his hands were shaking a little bit. He said, I, I remember what, all the things that you told me and now we're seeing it happen. It's, he said, uh, I'm amazed, we're amazed, and His Excellency is amazed. I mean, just in shock, you know, at what's happening, the fact that you said it before it happened. I thought, yeah. So the prophetic uh, will have fulfillments for things that are said, and they'll be redemptive in nature, not destructive in nature. Don't tell me about destruction if there's not some redemption in it. Unless God just wants to give a warning, you know, about something that's going to happen, then he'll say it. But the plan of God is always redemptive. Even his judgment is redemptive. <laughs> Even when he shakes you up and it seems negative. I'm speaking to leaders. I'll tell you, I'm prophesying here today. I'm prophesying to people, you're going to feel the shakeup of God. You're going to feel God begin to shake you in your shoes. You're going to feel conviction. You're going to feel the fear of the Lord come back upon you. You're going to start to shake your head and say, now God, what am I really doing with me? I have to get more busy to get more done. I have to be more in the plan of action of heaven. Very important time. But that's redemptive. That's not negative to make you feel scared. It's going to make you do more. It's going to make you fix everything. It's going to make you clean everything. It's going to make you pray. It's going to make you, you know, Get serious about doing more, getting into more. How can you adjust things? How can you fix things? How can you get everything going on in a better way? The plan of God is for your success. Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name for the the movement of prayer that's going to take, take over the earth. Now you caused the President of the United States to call today, this Sunday, this very day, a National Day of Prayer in America. And because he's an elected authority, now I was telling you about the lady that said that any authority and leader is of God. God just ordained it that way. No, he didn't. In Nigeria, again, I said that he wanted Christian leadership, but it just didn't happen. It was too much of a mess going on, many details. And Jonathan Goodluck did not win that election for many reasons. And the swarm of the Islamic crowds and all the people like that began to get mad and go crazy, and it, it was a big uproar, you know? And I tell you, if, if Goodluck had, had won that election, a lot of people would have died in Nigeria. I mean, multitudes would have died. Those other people would have went crazy and started killing everybody they could. You think they're killing them now? You think it's good? You, you think it's good when you think it's of God? Let me let me just bust this religious demon right in the head of these ignorant people that talk rubbish. They don't know what they're talking about. I said, I, I told this one lady. I said, the lady I was talking about. I said, you should listen to yourself, dear. How pathetic it sounds what you're saying. You should just stop as an objective listener and listen to how pathetic it is what you're saying. I said, you should take a trip down there and see where all the people are being slaughtered. I did. I was there. And I talked to those people and the devastation they're in and the things that are going on. And, and then some, something else popped up on the net. Someone sent me a link. I don't know why they sent me that link. It, it, God had to be in that, but I didn't feel it too pleasant, and it definitely wasn't an example of a, a news article that I want to create, because that's what we were talking about. And it was these people down there, they chopped this woman's head off in the market in front of her husband, in front of all the other people. And the police, the police just arrived in time for the husband not to get lynched and killed too. They cut the woman's head off in front of her husband at her own shop marketplace with all the other people. How humiliating is that? And let me tell you, the government is shielding these people 
allowing it to go on. There's infiltration, there's connections from within the government. Fact, from inside sources, fact, truth. Do you think that's God? Do you think God puts someone like that that's gonna be like that? Sympathetic to anybody that's of his own religion, whatever they do? You think that's God? How dare you say such a thing? That's like this other a bunch of people. See, we're on the earth and we are, we are the commanders on the earth. You get it? Like Isaiah 55 verse four. A leader and a commander are made you among the people. We need to take authority. And Jesus even said to anybody, whosoever will, not just to a leader, as myself or other people, but any Christian believer. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's for anybody. That's not just for some special anointed person in the pulpit with a microphone. That's for everybody. <laughs> so we're supposed to be doing our job, taking authority. See, a lot of people are waiting for someone to do something for them. And they're just stuck in this church where they just go there and attend there. But they never take any dominion. They never do anything. They never do any exploits. They never do anything that's of any benefit to the human race. Like their existence is not helping to advance the kingdom. They're just surviving and existing. And God's plan for you is never to just survive and exist. He wants you to thrive and persist and move forward passionately and prosper. And be in good health, even as your soul prospers, 3 John 2. And move forward and advance the kingdom. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says what? The kingdom of heaven permits violent aggression because the kingdom is taken by force. You need to take things and authority and territory and dominion by force. So this other, here's another religious demon. You ready? Another religious saying. Which when you analyze this, it just, you see how it just weakens people. Weakens uh, the strength of a believer. Takes away their authority and their power, their might and their power. They say, God is in control. No matter what happens, it's his will. Just like the one said, it's, it, and he appoints any leader. What, what scripture did you, you took that out of context. He says, we should pray for every leader that we have a godly and a peaceable life. The Bible, Jesus also said, follow peace with all men, that it will be well with you. It will be well with you. Follow peace with all men, for such is the will of God. It's good to follow peace. Even with a fool, make peace with him. Leave a fool as a fool. Don't argue with him all the time. I see the benefit of that. You don't need, you don't need to be contentious and fight. Just leave them and smile at them. My well, praise the Lord, okay. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> cool, man. Shando, Kida, Husha, Kaba. Okay, Sawa. Everything's all right. But you're an idiot, but I know it. But it's all right. I have this lady who does uh, laundry for us. Uh, she's so funny. She, in her accent, she says, It's all right. It's all right. Anytime you call her up, she says, It's all right. It's all right. And she prays her voice. If she's going to say it loud, she says, It's all right. It's all right. You ready? Yeah. Can we come down? It's all right. It doesn't say yes or no. It says, it, yeah, it's all right. So you could say to anybody, it's all right. Just have peace. You're the winner when you do that. Smile at everybody. Let them think they're okay even when they're not. Unless it's time to rebuke someone. Now, God does do that. Also greatly through a real prophet, okay? And you know I've done my fair share of all that. Still will keep doing it. I'm not taking that out of the equation, but sometimes you just have to say, I prefer peace in my world. So let everybody think there's peace. You can be mad at someone and don't say anything. They can't misquote you. They can't quote anything you didn't say. It doesn't matter how you felt. They don't have any evidence that you've said anything to them. They don't have anything to work with. You just you can huff and puff and walk by and you don't feel happy and maybe they could sense that you feel a bit unnerved about something or whatever, but you didn't say anything. The smart one is oftentimes one who won't say anything. Just leave them. Leave a fool in his folly. Leave a pig in their squalor and their mud and mess. It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> 
Really, it's not all right, but for you, it has to be all right, all right. So leave it all right. It's all right. That's good. That's good teaching right there. Keys to staying successful. Let me talk about that. It's easier to become successful than it is to stay successful. Part of success is you have to have peace in your world. You have to have good people in your world. It's really sad. It's kind of sad, you know, when you see someone that seemed okay and then they go nuts. But you have to just keep right on moving. And, and well, something I said before the... Uh, before we got rolling on film here, I spoke a couple of really strong things because I, I feel it, I mean it. Don't mess with me, don't mess with us, don't mess with God's program, God will strike you. A curse will come and follow you. We're not to be joked with. You understand, I need to probably say that part of that now, but say it in a, in a nicer way. People that do things behind your back and they're crazy and they're, and they're, they're like t contentious and they're fighting and they're doing slander and all that. You think God doesn't see that? You think we don't hear that? You think God doesn't show us and tell us, to tell me, even the prophet? His prophet doesn't tell me? He does. You need to get yourself straightened out. Live in peace with other people. And if you're on a mission to fight me or undermine me or talk about me, oh, every word will hang you up like you've been strung up on a pole by the neck. So be it in Jesus' name. I'm serious. You don't know how many people want to fight, undermine, mock, hate, subvert, gossip against, discredit, attack. Every, let me say it, and I hope you, the one that are doing it, is watching right now. I hope you're God. Had you turned this on to watch me say this right now to you, you will hang by the words you've spoken against me. You will hang by the words you've spoken against other servants of God. You will hang by your religious foolishness that you think you're somebody uh, of note and really we don't even take the note. We haven't seen anything to take note of. Your, you know, your ministry is boring. If you have a ministry, your church is boring. Your life is boring. You're, you're of no significance. So how do you think you're somebody so great? You have no, uh, you, you, better, you better take care of yourself because God will react. I'm glad, you know, when, when we're secure in who we are in God and we're blessed by God and great things are happening, we don't care. You know, if somebody falls off, the, falls off the way, you know, what can you do, man? They, they did it. It happened to them. You know, we pray for them. We love them. Anyway, Jesus' love, if not our own. Jesus' love through us because he loves everybody. But hey, help yourself. Be deceived. It's too bad. We pray God's fire. I tell you, I prayed God's fire. Last Sunday night, I had a visitation of God. Last Sunday night. And I was praying, like, immediately after the meeting, like within some minutes after the meeting, the Sunday meeting, I was praying, fire from heaven, man. And God answered the prayer right in the middle of while I was praying. The phone rang with somebody I was in prayer with. And it was a major, major deliverance of something in business, something big that was a bit of an obstacle and a roadblock. The phone call came. In fact, while I was praying, the phone kept ringing. They had to keep, you know, busying it out, you know, doing the call reject red button. And I, I, would, I didn't get disturbed by that, but I was thinking, boy, I wish you'd turn the ringer off and just wait, you know. And finally, when I finished the prayers, like we went on about 15, 20 minutes, a long, long time. And, uh, well, that doesn't seem that long, but when you're praying, sitting in a, public place, you know, under the anointing, that, that seemed, that's probably a long time. Uh, or the beginning of a long time. We, we could have went another half hour, but when I felt like I had said everything I needed to say in prayer and God was moving the phone call, the phone was already ringing with the answer. Now that's in the realm of something great that's happening. So God does answer by fire. And the scripture also says, before you even finish calling upon me, I'm already answering because your walk is with me. 
I love this scripture about success in Genesis 24, 40. I was trying to get through it before, and I want to I want to say this principle again. And there's a conversation going on in the scripture there with different people. I I, I don't want to take the full context of it. I want to take the principle from this verse because there's one, two, three, four, five six things I'm seeing there. It says, King James, and he said unto me, the Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee and prosper thy way. Okay, that sounds a little bit hard to understand. Who was talking to who? Thee thou, whithersoever thou goest, thou and therefores, and I hate that King James language. I just don't like it at all. I like New King James because it says it's the same translation, but it speaks it in the English that we all speak. There's no law about King James. Whoever said that, that's their opinion. Everybody has an opinion, but some opinion, everyone has opinions. Everybody has armpits. Some stink. Praise the Lord. Your opinion is your opinion. Doesn't mean it's like a, a golden rule of anything. Where'd you get it from? All right? God's also creative. You know, I've, I found the punctuation... I was in a scripture in Psalm 107, and if you'd like me to send that to you, what I, key, key verses I picked out of Psalm 107, phenomenal psalm. It's famous for the uh, Psalm 107, 20. Psalm 107, 20 says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. But there's about seven other verses that are so powerful and it was, listen to what I had. It had, had a comma, then uh, too, too long of a space, and then a capital A in front of and. Every other word was capitalized. I thought, wait a minute. There's no semicolon there like it's a break in the sentence. So me as a, a brilliant uh, super college collegiate level, uh, I, was a, I, I was taking master's courses. I'm a Bachelor of Arts in uh, minor in business and major in uh, uh, Eng English and all that. So and I'm a brilliant writer. I have no punctuation. I know grammar. And, you know, I'm seeing that somebody did this. You didn't need to have the capital A there. So I thought it needs to read smoother. So I just made the cap a, a smaller A because it looks better in the sentence. And that's proper punctuation and grammar. P proper. Not changing anything. It's the same word, but I'm just making it look the layout better. Then the spacing between, you know, they'll have Psalm 107, then it'll be like 13-15. I thought, no, put every verse. So I put 13 comma, four, no space, 13 comma, no space, 14 comma, 15. Then when it went to 18 comma, 18 comma, 19 comma, 20 comma, whatever, then one da 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 and put them all together. You could see that. If you'd like me to send that to you, it's absolutely brilliant. What the, what the Lord said through the psalmist in Psalm 107. There's things about business in there. There's things about prosperity in there. There's things about prospering in, financially in there. There's healing in there. There's the prophetic word being thrown out there. It's very powerful. So uh, what, when I see the principles in here, just in this one verse, Genesis 24, 40, he said to me, whoever was talking, let me leave that out. Let me just start with this. The Lord... Before whom I walk, that's me, I'm walking with him, are you? The Lord before whom I walk, he'll send his angel, woo, and prosper my way. Now he was saying that they were having this conversation, he'll send his angel to walk with thee, King James again, you got to read, read the three verses before and after to figure out the context. I don't have that time right now. But six things I saw, number one, the Lord, well, seven. Number two, I, me. Number three, walking. I'm walking with him. Number four, he will send his angel. <laughs> Number five, and they will prosper my way. Seven things. Number one, the Lord, before whom I walk. Number two, he'll send his angel. Number three, to be with me. to prosper my way. Wow. There it is. That's the key to success. You know, Joseph had favor, not because people liked him. Some people really didn't like him. People forgot him and rejected him. People lied on him. People hurt him. 
Psalm 105, verse uh, 17, 18, down in there, talks about Joseph being hurt with, uh, with, with, with irons on his feet. They hurt his feet with iron, chains and all that. So he wasn't liked by everybody, but God surely showed his favor to him, and he became the manager of the whole kingdom economically. God can elevate somebody like that. Esther, nobody really understood her, but she got favor with the king and then delivered her people. When she first started out, people said she's crazy and said, well, if you're really serious, you have to go through this process of anointing in this kind of oil and the king likes it this way. You have to know the protocol and the chamberlains were teaching her in the ways of the protocol. Like when the king finally does say, okay, I'll give it a shot. Let her come. We see what happens. You have to be ready for that. Nobody understood that before it happened, what she was up to. And that was Esther's deal, man. The, the name of God is not in the book of Esther. It never says God did this, God did that, like it did here in Genesis. All through Genesis, you see God everywhere. In the first, in the first verse. Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth in beginnings. In the beginning, he created everything. That's God. There he is. And then the Lord said, then he had a voice, his manifestation as the voice of his, his own voice that walked with Adam. You know, so God was off, all in there, but in the book of Esther, and there's much more, read Genesis. And the Lord prospered Joseph, Genesis 39. The Lord was with him. Talks about the Lord, his favor, what he's doing. Things happening, so powerful. But Esther... It was Esther's deal. Her and her uncle Mordecai, man, and crazy Haman trying to kill them. Kill them all, and he got hung. Esther was the warrioress. Oh, yes. Esther was the warrioress. Oh, yes. It was on her to do it. Imagine that. That's phenomenal. The warrior woman. The warrioress. The prophetess. <laughs> the woman with finesse who gained favor that rescued an entire nation. We, we, we take it too lightly how much the hand of God is upon us to do things. We're waiting for someone else. But I want to empower people to rise up in this season and hour. I'm praying along with our president in America today, right now. It's early morning hours there. It's afternoon, evening hours uh, in the part of the world I'm in right now. Early morning there. People are just getting going. It's, I guess it's like uh, 11 a.m. there now, going to 11 a.m. in the morning. The Lord is moving. You know, the thing about Trump, if he didn't have the demeanor, President Trump, if he didn't have the demeanor and fortitude and confidence and being a made man, already successful and like that for so many years in his business life, and his personal life, and in his mind, his psyche, his persona. He even had Christian teaching from Norman Vincent Peale, who wrote the famous book, The Power of Positive Thinking. So he came from the Positive Thinking Church, the Marble Collegiate Church in New York, in New York City, Manhattan. In Manhattan, the Marble Collegiate Church. That's, that's where his, his teaching, his Christian reference was from. Probably the best one he could have had, because he's going to need a lot of positive thinking and he wrote like 12 books or so, however many books he wrote. And all the books he has, his statement says, you have to, to succeed at anything. It's God's will for people to be successful. But he said, for you to succeed at anything, you have to start with this notion and knowing that you're great, that greatness is in you, that you can do it, or else you're not going to make it. He said, some people just don't have the talent. They don't have that thing. They don't have that chutzpah. They don't have that charisma. They don't have that creativity. They don't have that switch. They don't have the diligent nature. I've heard a lot of people say that they weren't the greatest, most brilliant person, but they were perseverant. The guy that's uh, Donald Trump's campaign manager said that. He was like a hillbilly guy from the South in America. He said he didn't even own a suit until 2016. He had to wear a formal suit, buy a formal suit to meet with the president because the president's not going to see someone dressed in casual clothes, you know, coming especially for an interview, or to do something for him. You've got to be dressed to the nines, you know, you, the, the perfect tie, the perfect jacket, the shirt, everything right. Hey, 
you're meeting with Donald Trump. He said he didn't even own a suit before that. But he said when he was growing up, he had this, this motto, he says, he didn't consider himself the best, but he was going to learn. And he said, I know I can outwork everybody. I've heard a lot of people say that. They said, I'll, I, I know I can out, nobody can work as hard as me. I heard another guy, a, a real estate guy, he's online a lot now, uh, Brother Grant uh, Cardone. He says, hey, I put my time in. He said, I realized that I had so many calls to make that one day he wasn't going to go out to lunch. He was going to stay and make those phone calls. He says, I've been like that. He says, if I think I have to make one or two calls, I 10 exit and I go and I make 10 calls just because I got to keep that thing going. And he, he, was, he was given a rebuke to people that are successful. He says, some of you, very successful, very rich, but you can lose it because you're not doing the same work that you need to be doing all the time to keep it going and going to higher levels. He says, me, about me, I'm doing it. I never stop. I've heard that testimony many times. Just today, I don't know that I took any time to go through all the media about Kobe Bryant. I really didn't because it just didn't kind of grab my attention enough. But today, just today, today, Sunday, today, earlier in the day, a video popped up. And he said he was no good when he started. He was no good. But for 10 years, he worked like an animal. He wouldn't stop. I'm better than him. Smart. A smart animal. <laughs> Animals, uh, what, what's the work like an animal? What does it mean? Work like a dog. Do they really work? I mean, maybe, maybe they just, they, they had that persistence. An animal. You know, they'll keep going at it. You know what I mean? Maybe that's where that terminology came from. Not that there's any correlation or relation. We're not related, by the way. By the way, uh, we're created, not evolved. Uh, there's no giraffes in my ancestry. How about you? Any water buffaloes? Great grand uncle? He was a water buffalo. Ooh! Or oh, hippos from the lake. Praise the Lord. No, you're not related. So the thing about what these smart chimpanzees and apes, you know, that we have some affinity with them. Get out of here. Darwin was full of the devil. God created everything. If you just read my Facebook page now a lot, you see all these beautiful animals that I did. That wasn't by accident. Things were like designed. Even this uh, custom tailor shirt I'm wearing. You see all the colors and you see these designs, these hand woven like uh, lines in here and things. This is like a Chinese silk, very high end. Uh, the royals wear this kind of garment. This was, this was imported from China. Not lately. <laughs> Don't make a joke. This was here several years ago before any of this nonsense was going on. But this is a Chinese royal silk fabric. The royals make clothes out of this and jackets. So somebody bought like seven meters of this stuff for me to make suits and shirts and, and so on. But you see the way somebody designed all of this. this. This wasn't just an accident, you know what I mean? So we have that creative brilliance in us as humans that no other species has. But there's this thing called the work ethic. The diligent hand makes rich. Someone could become the greatest because they decide to get good at it. And they showed, here's Kobe talking, talking about himself when he couldn't match up to be any good. And then they, sh as he's talking a while, then they showed a clip where he ran down the court like a wild man and just went airborne, man. Jesus! He went airborne. He jumped and leaped through the air. Whoosh, boom! And then flipped around backwards and just like, yeah, like he's the, he's the master dancer on the court, man. That's his place. He's mastered the game. But he said from back then, he said, I'm never going to quit. Doesn't matter the opposition I feel, how good I, he wasn't at the time. He's not going to give up the game. He's going to keep at it. And he became one of the, the greatest of all in that sport, in that arena. He made it his place because he wouldn't quit. God, this is the nature of God. God is like that. He's a persevering, passionate, king of pursuit, pursuing everything that's good. I wanted to see it happen, but we need to be like that. We need to be like that.
And most people aren't doing, any, doing much. Definitely not enough. And there's a move of the Holy Ghost, and I say this prophetically, thus saith the Lord. There's a move of the Holy Ghost going out in the earth right now to stir people up, to awaken them, to recommission them, reappoint them, reanoint them, spark them, activate them, initiate things for them, put things in motion for the greatest season they've ever known. Let me say this. And in Jesus' name, that is the will of the word of the Lord, and it's happening. You, you need to be a receiver of that. Nothing happens without the permission of a person. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 1, 19, be willing and obedient, and you'll eat the good of the land. You have to be willing. You have to be obedient to the vision. And you'll eat the good of the land, not by accident. Then there's the realm of creativity. I love this principle too. The greatest move of God, that's what I was just going to say a second ago. It just came back around in my, in my mind. My mind is a very, very uh, fertile, fertile place. A very, a very brilliant world goes on inside of me. Talk to TM4. I'm telling you. The greatest move of God is ahead of us, not behind us. Yeah, we saw great things. Yeah, we had great experiences. Yeah, we've seen great miracles. Yeah, we've seen great crowds. Yeah, we've seen moves of heaven. We've seen revivals. We've seen nations shaken. Millions of people touched. But there's more coming. Because all of that was also training for reigning. You know, each step in each phase, you go to a higher level. And my friend, you're, if you're a preacher, a business person, an intercessor, some, some desire you have in your career, or if you're an entertainer, or if you're whatever creative realm you find yourself in, as far as uh, wherever you find yourself, God has a greater place for you to be. God has a greater, a greater kabarisa, kalabase, a greater place for you to be. A greater grace, a greater thing. It's going to be so phenomenal. The best days you have are ahead of you, not behind you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Nations are being shaken, but first you have to be shaken. Where you sat down, now God's going to have you stand up. Where you stopped along the way, now God is going to have you stand up. The greatest days are yet ahead of us. The greatest days of great things are ahead of us. They are ahead of us. Did you hear me? They're not behind us. They're ahead of us. God can shift things in a minute. He can change anything in a minute. He can put you in positions in a minute. He can speak to people. People can just, you know, find you, discover you. The Lord spoke to me this week. He said, many great leaders in the world, my, my great ones are going to discover you. They're going to say, hey, how, how, maybe I heard of you before, but now it's like something... It's come in the radar and we need to connect. We need to do some things together. It's happening all the time. God has a way, you know, when he gets you ready, he just take you and put you wherever you need to be. Elevation and promotion are from the Lord. Success is from the Lord. Are you hearing that? Success, elevation, promotion are from the Lord. Continuing your greatest days. We're praying, we're feeling God. We're feeling the thrust of new activation, new purpose, new design, new creativity, new thing is happening. It's just going to be phenomenal what God's about to do. Let's lift our hands. I was just about to have this as a closing realm and we're on another broadcast here because of the technical stuff. Anyway, the Lord is about to launch people, stirring people up to pray. And this is your day and hour. And don't ever let anyone intimidate you. Undermine you. Try to make you think less about yourself. These people that, you're the accuser of the brethren. That's, that's my word to some people. You're the devil. You want to accuse. You want to persecute. You want to malign. You want to undermine. You want to gossip. You want to slander. You're the devil. You that do that. You are the devil. You and him are bosom buddies, cousins, your friends, you're in the family together. You, you better not try to say you're a Christian believer and you're acting like that. 
accuser of the brethren, you know. Job was the greatest man in the East, and the devil went to God over him. Now we see in Revelation 12, where the accuser, people that have all this stuff about like intention toward you, and anyway, I'm speaking to leaders. If you're a great leader, you'll, you'll, you'll encounter this. If you want to do great things in business or in life, you'll encounter this. You probably already have, but you will at some point if you haven't already. The problem is with them, not with you. So you have to stay strong on your, upon your, your, your platform. Never let it go dim, never let it go silent. You need to stay there. Man, I feel the anointing here. You need to stay there. Keep moving, do more. Someone says, well, prophet, I had somebody and they did such bad things and they, I don't know. Hey, what are you going to do? You're in a crazy mixed up world. Just keep moving. Pray for them and commit them to the Lord. Leave them there. Maybe he can fix them. If he can't, that's also another problem. But it's not your problem. You know, people that cause contention and strife and confusion and derision and gossip and slander and you have everything to say and all the things you think and maybe somebody said something and you hear it and the third voice, the other voice and you're, and you're all messed up. You're, you're, you're jacked up. It doesn't affect us. And we're definitely not going to allow that foolishness to operate around us. One thing about success in life, you need to be with pro people. For people, they're for you, they're not against you, they're powerful. They're not mixed up by whatever. The minute you see, let, let me give someone a word of uh, the Lord here, a word of wisdom, a word of teaching, a word of information that'll help you. Instruction, teaching, advice, wisdom. When you see this person rise up with some contention, don't wait for things to go further because it'll blow up further. Get rid of them now. Cut them off. That spirit of contention is a demon. Oh, my God. The spirit of strife is a demon. You're not there to correct them and listen to their rubbish. No. Kick them out the door yesterday, today or tomorrow at the latest, whichever comes first, which is always yesterday. Someone said, man of God, when do you want this? I, I want something. When do you want it? I, I say, yesterday, today, or tomorrow, whichever comes first. Well, yesterday it didn't happen. Today we're still talking about it. So let's say if it doesn't happen today, tomorrow at the very latest. How about that? That's when I want everything good. And that's when I want everything evil now to come to an end. <laughs> that's powerful. That's when I want everything evil to come to an end. Like yesterday, today, or tomorrow at the latest. I know. I know what I'm talking about. Woo, you'd be so nice and you're nicey, nice self. Nice is not in the Bible. Nice is on the cookie box. Nice is in France. Nice, France, you know, nice, France. Nice cookies, but it's not in the Bible. Wisdom, discernment, warrior, capacity, power, knowledge, understanding, greatness. That, that's, what's it, that, that's what's for you in the scripture. Hello. Someone lift your hands if you're receiving all of this. Just drink this because this will help you. The minute someone wants to fight and argue, dismiss them from your company. They say rubbish to you. They write, now, now, you could forgive them. You understand? They say, well, maybe they were having a moment. The people do have a moment. But really, their heart is right. So I know some people, like I, I was talking earlier about follow peace with all men and women. Follow peace with the people. Sometimes you just got to put up with someone's... <laughs> can't say it. You have to put up with someone's because you're doing something and you just know that's how they are. You can't like correct them every step of the way. You ever have someone like that? They're really good and gifted and they're really doing something, but they have this other side to them, hello, and they could just come back at you with whatever. And you're going to say, that wasn't right. I'm not taking that. Who are you talking to? Who do you think? Who do you think you're talking to? You know, well, you think you could talk to me like that? Hey, 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 Italian salute. Hey, you know? You can't, you, don't, you can't do that with everybody. Just sometimes silence is great. Silence cannot be misquoted. 
And the Bible also says a soft answer turns away wrath or no answer. Just leave it. Just because someone gets stirred up doesn't mean you have to answer everything that they're saying. Just because they're, they're in a new thing now with something they're thinking about. If it's positive, hey, try to work with it. If it's negative, cast it out. Kenneth Copeland, the great man of God in, in Fort Worth, Texas, Newark, Texas, where he has his big headquarters. I've been there. I've touched his planes. I put my hand on them, praying. His security guys saw me doing that one time. They came around. I said, oh, I mean, these guys got guns. I was like, hey, hey, boys, I'm all right. Just pray. I'm just praying. I'm a servant of God. Just praying. They went, oh, okay. <laughs> they're, they're really, they really are spiritual people. Thank God. So I was like, I'm just praying, just praying, praying over my own future. I'm not praying, touching this nice jet and praying. Been there in the meetings and the conferences, beautiful facilities, been in their television studio. Oh, my. I told that story before. I met with all their technical staff and they were giving me advice. I recorded all of it. I have all of the things. I need to get that typed out. That's another thing I need to type out as a kind of a game plan of the wisdom of the men from one of the greatest television ministries on earth. But Kenneth Copeland has had a principle for many decades. He's been in the ministry 50, 50 years now, 60 years. He says he never reads anything negative about himself. He refuses. And I heard Dr. Mike Murdoch say that. He said he told people in his mailroom, whatever, someone's writing anything contentious or wrong, they said, you want to read this, all this person? No, I don't want to read any of it. Screen it. I got to keep my focus, because you could get angry. You can get irritated. The devil could try to attack you through that. I know. Nonsense. And they always prove themselves, the accuser of the brother, and here it is again, you know, the next thing they're asking you to pray for them because they're, they're all messed up by the devil. I thought, well, that's the source of what you even said. He, he, was, he, was, the, he was the mouthpiece. Yet you're his mouthpiece. That, that what you were talking about, he's the one that brought it because he showed up in your house now. He showed up in your life now. But me, I'm fine. And I, I, I was talking about a particular situation one time, and I told the other person, I said, hey, you see how it is with me. I'm great. I'm happy. I'm blessed. Everything I am, my car, my house, my dwellings, everywhere I am, the presence of God is, we're wonderful. And then these other people are half possessed going through all these other things. But it doesn't have to be like that. Straighten yourself out. Are you hearing God's servant today? Straighten yourself out. Get over yourself. Nobody's jealous of you. What people say are lies. What people do is this. Or, or whatever, it's, or maybe it's just something that's none of your business anyway. Just keep yourself straight. Could you imagine if we had, could you imagine if we had a lot of straight people in the world, more straight people, everybody was really into truth, into excellence, into great ways of living, and we're all together, how much we could actually get done on earth? My God. God's will is success. His will is peace, his will is joy, his will is prosperity, his will is abundance, his will is for you to have the abundant life. And I thank God that I'm living it. I'll never be broke a day in my life. Haven't been for a very long time. Will never be. Always. He is my provider. He always was, he is, and he always will be my great provider. The one who makes me rich and has no sorrow. Proverbs 10.22 says, The Lord will make you rich and add no sorrow. And that's the will of God for you. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. It's the will of God that America sell forward in the capitalist, conservative, great economic uh, development and upri upbringing and the uprising and the right things to happen through President Trump and it will continue in the, from the next election. And these devils that are coming against are gonna be chained and bound these demons of corruptions that operate in nations, these demons of occultism and witchcraft and all kinds of, uh, and even in the church, religious devils fighting each other, striving, gossiping. Uh, you, you just, we, just, we just cancel all that. We crush all that to nothing in Jesus' name. Let me tell you something. Uh, a great man of God who's a senior man, Caesar man, very famous, one of the most famous preachers alive in our generation right now, he said, he said, he's 62 years old now, he said, he said, he, he, he was writing, he's talking to himself, he says he's 62 years old now, and he's never seen a gossiper rich. 
He'd never seen a rich backbiter, gossiper, persecutor, hater, underminer. He said he's never seen a blessed one of them. They're always like kicking rocks, frustrated, mad at themselves, mad at the world. Or there's something going on that got a hold of them. But, but you, you could have been walking fairly well, but then something like that gets a hold of you. And it'll turn you off into another thing. And it never was the will of God. You were supposed to be on the path of prosperity, the path of success, the path of well-being. But you chose to walk another way. The choice is there. I'm reminded of the serial killer, uh, Ted Bundy, who got, supposedly got saved. James Dobson went to see him and led him to the Lord. And uh, he, he was trying to be a lawyer, very sharp in the head, but he was a psycho. He killed so many women. He said he killed over 100 women. And he was cooked in the electric chair for it. And the judge said to him, says, hey, you're, doing, you're studying the legal game. You seem to have a gift in that area. Would have loved you have even practice in my court. Be a, a lawyer here. But he said, but you chose, here's what he said, famous words. You chose another way, partner. <laughs> you chose another path, partner. So the, the decision of this court is that you will die by execution in the electric chair and fry with electric current until you are dead. <laughs> bah! So we have to know that we're in charge. Understand, we're in charge of this life. God is not the one who's just going to come and do everything for us. But you also need to be very careful that you don't get swayed away by the enemy in any way, shape, or form. Keep your head on straight. Keep your walk straight. Keep your life straight. Keep your things going right. Stay with the Lord. I love the scripture again. Here, my, here, here am I with the Lord. I'm walking with him and before him and with him. And he's sending his angels. My God. By the way, this virus thing, I curse it in Jesus' name. You should never have it in Jesus' name. All the Psalm, all the Psalm 91, all the scriptures, Isaiah 54, 17. All I talk about, it's not going to touch you. 10,000 will fall at your right hand, but it's not going to come nigh thee. Hello. That's the position. Nobody's getting it. Somebody thought, oh, somebody that had it touched President Trump's hand. And so he said, okay, he'll be tested. And it came out negative. So I wrote, I put it on my Facebook page today. You can see it on my Facebook page. I said, he can't get it. We cannot get it. Then I put bracket, Psalm 91, www.thomasmanton.com. Put my website. We cannot get it. Psalm 91. Hello, it says, or it says, if you're a Kenyan preacher, it says, I'm saying, it says, the Bible says, I had this woman, and, woman preacher was in London in my a conference I was doing in 2002. That's when I gave the word for the election from London, sent it down to Kenya, and it circulated everywhere, went viral. Not bad viral, but there was no internet, Facebook back then, there was email, so everybody and print, print shops and all that, and word of mouth, and everybody spread that word like to the millions. I don't know how many people knew about it, because I, for years after that, people, you know, I'd be, I was famous to the millions of people over that, other things, but also that, that particular prophecy. Other prophecies, but that particular one about the election. And she said, the Bible says, I'm saying, and she said, say it with me, with me. Say it with me. I think she was Kikuyu. Say it with me. Upon this lock, I will build my church. And she said, I say it. I am saying. And then people just looked at her. Uh, the preachers, uh, they, they, they look like, you ever see preachers that take pictures, especially from Kenya? They take pictures and they look like it's a mugshot when they're at the police station when they're drunk and got beat up and they handcuffed and they're standing there like this. Why don't you smile? I, I rebuke people. Like, they send me a message and they have this picture like this. I said, how is that supposed to inspire anybody to like you? Can you smile? And they get this nervous smile like, mm -hmm, their lips start twitching. I'm trying. Is it a mugshot or is it a profile photo for the ministry? Mugshots. You look like a thug, praise the Lord, who's just been arrested. Preacher of what? Anointed how? I don't see... I don't see any joy of Jesus on you. I'm really looking for it, but I'm not seeing it. So she said, say it with me. And nobody said nothing. Then she said, I say it. Say it with me. She did it again. 
And a third time, people just sit like this. Don't worry, they did that to me too. Preaching to a bunch of Kenyan pastors. Oh my, they just look at you. Some of them, they won't give anything. No offering. Jesus, you'd have to sanitize the money now. You got hand, we should make sanitizer for money that's been in some ugly person's pocket. Sweating on it, sitting on it, whatever. It's disgusting, you know? That's why every time I take change and I tell any of my people buying anything for me, you get some crispy notes like they're new from the bank. I don't care if they're giving you a 500, it's an ugly 500. Simba's crying. Now you got the lion on the new 500 note in Kenya. And Simba's like making a face like something stinks here where I've been. Why do you do that to me? If he was a real live Simba, he'd take a bite out of that thing. Praise the Lord. There's a story some guy told me, a safari guy, and I was in Savo, Savo West at the place, and they told the story about the guy that got his, uh, his hind quarters bitten off by a lion. A lioness got a hold of him, and she thought it was needing of hot sauce, you know? Uh, you know, a filet of uh, get the hot sauce, you know, for the lioness. It, some hot sauce and some peptang tomato, ket, tomato sauce, you know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm having fun. Praise the Lord. And, and I thought, oh, that guy's not going to live it down. I said, did he live? He's okay, yeah, but he doesn't have any, you know. I said, well, at least he can walk. And if he wanted to act like he had some, he could just take some pillows and stick them in his pants, you know. Get a couple of pillows, you know. A little string, you know, go around his legs and hold them up so he looked like he has some, you know. Blessed assurance there still, but there isn't any there. Thank God he survived. I mean, my God, a lioness bit the guy. He got out of the car, he didn't, and the lioness was there under the car and just jumped on him and took a bite and didn't let go. Oh, it's terrible. So that's a real Simba. But Simba, the money, is making a face because it's like that. So I said, give me... So, so even those kind of notes, you won't even find them in an offering... What's up with that? We've done major events, and the things that people sit because they don't, and someone says, well, they're not taught. Why aren't they taught? The preachers that say that the people that they're not taught, you didn't teach them, so it's your fault. You ugly thing, you. Get busy teaching. Well, if you talk about money, people are going to get upset. Well, you can go to hell. Praise the Lord. You can go right to hell, and everybody will be upset there. If you think you're going to make anybody upset, go to hell. Enjoy it. You're no preacher of truth. You don't have any guts. You don't have any courage. You don't have any Holy Ghost. People need to be taught the laws of money, the laws of success. Hello. I'm glad I'm doing it. I'm so happy. I'm so thrilled. I, I, I have a reward from God in many ways for te telling the truth, for being a truth man. You shall know the truth, John 8, 32, and the truth shall make you free. I'm glad I'm the one. Bringing it out. Stingy side-swiping, side-stepping, not generous. But then you have other people, oh, they really have a revelation that are some of our greatest partners. In Kenya, beautiful people, generous people, beyond what you'd even see some people sometimes do in America or Europe. You'd be shocked. Right here, but God touches them and they're very generous, very wonderful. But they're the people that are getting rich. But somebody needs to rebuke this stingy thing that's going on with people. Hello? Don't give nothing, scared to talk about it. They won't give, people don't give, everybody's broke, everyone's in poverty. You know, it's just like God will leave you, I was talking about this before, we need to take authority. God will leave you there unless you rise up to change it. Are you hearing God's prophet? God will leave you there unless you rise up to change it, and you need to do it by force. So the laws of giving need to be enacted. I unfriended someone on Facebook, a guy that used to work for me. Can you imagine? And he went on this whole rant about the people shouldn't tithe. I thought, I'm done with you. I'm not even going to answer. I'm done! Unfriend, where is it? Unfriend and unfo... I unfriended, but it didn't disappear, so you have to actually go and hit unfollow so you won't see them again with their ugly stuff. Arguing about. I thought, boy, you, no wonder you're messed up. No wonder you smell bad and you don't have enough money. No wonder you, you won't 
be, you're not a giver. I noticed the guy's not a giver anyway. Because one time he's trying to say he does his graphics and he does his graphic stuff for like uh, some media thing. And it's like going like around and around and around. I thought, this is so boring. And you, you say you want to charge like a hundred and something thousand because it takes time to do that. I thought, keep it, man. Let me find a stock photo somewhere and I'll spin it. Let, let me get in the studio. Give me like a ball and like turn the thing on and then do this thing like and hide my hand, you know, digitally and spin it. And there's my spinning breaking news thing or whatever. I don't have to give you nothing. I'll find another way. Praise the Lord. Someone lift your hands. Let's pray. I'm, I'm really honored here. Talk about you don't have to tithe. Well, you can be cursed because the Bible says when you don't, a curse, a financial curse comes upon your life. And then people rebuking the guy and then he goes religious like, oh, brother, you know, get, get uh, discernment or whatever. You're the one that doesn't have it. I'm done. Canceled. That was my final sign if I ever thought that I should do something with a person like that that I won't do it. People give signs, you know. I want to say this, watch the signs. This is a prophetic admonition. This will help somebody. This will save you devastation in your life. Watch the signs when someone's not acting right. You're picking up on things. Don't endlessly overlook them. Even if you overlook them once or twice or thrice, that means one, two, or three times. Don't Keep it as a thing because it's gonna, it, it, it's, it's not destined to succeed because of that issue the way it is with that person. Look for the signs and find the exit sign. Praise the Lord. Don't prolong a relationship with someone that you know is a cracked actor, a success key. I'm not done, but I feel like we're I'm coming in for a landing. I'll pick this up in another setting. But the Lord wants us to, he wants us to have a whole section here in this book. Prophetic Keys of Successful Living. We're sold out. When we're going to reprint, you'll be able to get this as an, an e-book also. And brilliant stuff. I have a whole chapter on speech. I have a whole chapter on success. I have a whole chapter on wealth. I have a whole chapter on thinking. I have a whole chapter on chapters on so many uh, different things. I think this is about 700 prophetic wisdom statements that God gave me in 81 different or 81 or 83 different categories of living in this book right here. You cannot read this or, or partake of this and remain the same in your life. It's a success manual. And we'll be having this soon along with my other books. Some of them are over here. The Laws of Success and other ones and other new ones we're putting out. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven. Thank you for the admonition. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the wisdom. Thank you for the truth. Thank you for the prophecies. Thank you for the teaching. Thank you for the correction. Thank you for all of it. We give you praise that you're causing people to walk right, to grow up, to take big stature, to make decisions, to stop thinking that everything was left up to you. And they, they know that some things are up to them. They need to make decisions. They need to get up and walk. And I prophesy again that there is activation coming. A new season is coming. A new release is coming. The fear of the Lord is coming upon you greater. You're getting stirred up. You're feeling a shaking and quaking and baking and awakening. Wow. You're feeling like the Lord is he's bringing conviction to you. He's correcting you. You might feel bad. You might feel nervous. You might feel tense over it. It's okay because God is trying to fix you up to get you into the right way of going. And this is a season and a day and an hour, says the Lord, where I'm going to begin to correct my own. I'm going to begin to work with my leaders. I'm going to begin to, and my people, people that have greatness, such greatness in them, I'm going to begin to fix things in them. I'm going to have them just, 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 just work everything and put everything in order and perspective and in motion and in operation so that they can move very fast now. And the Lord says again, I'm going to have you to be discovered. I'm going to have you to be discovered by the greats. I'm going to have you to be discovered by the greats. I'm going to put you on great platforms, says the Lord. I'm going to put you on, and this is the word of the Lord to me, but I'm, I'm also releasing it and echoing it out to you from, from the voice of heaven. Uh, heaven's broadcasting right here, folks. The Lord is going to begin to have you be discovered. He's going to give you favor with the influential and your influence. We'll then go far. 
because you have influence from the influencer given to you as a favor gift from God. And things are going to begin to shake. And elevation and promotion come from me, says the Lord, not from man. Man can help you, but they can also be useless. They can leave you. They can reject you. They can fight you. They can forget about you. They can lie. They can cheat. They can steal. They can corrupt. They can try to hurt. But the God says, no, not me. I, you bless, you're, you're blessed when you trust in me, as, as we were teaching. A couple of weeks back in the message, I was born to be blessed. You need to watch that one from Jeremiah 17. Talked about curses the man, and I don't like the word so much, but curses the one who trusts in, in man, but the one who trusted the Lord will be blessed, highly favored. So when you're with me and walking with me, even as I said here in Genesis 24, 40, that you're walking with me and I'm sending angels and I will prosper you in your way. Isaiah 48, 17, the Lord says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way that you should go. And he said about in Hosea 12, 13, how greatly he'll use the prophetic voice to bring people out of the wilderness and out of darkness and out of bondage. And he said how he'll create new things in the earth by the prophetic voice, according to Amos 3, 7, when he said, surely the Lord God will do nothing except he first then reveal his secret to his prophet, his servant, the prophet. And then other people should even echo the voice. Things are being created. He said, again, what Jesus said, what you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. I'm giving you authority, says the Lord. I've given it to you. Again, Isaiah 55, verse 4. A leader and a commander, I've made you among the people. And the people that you didn't know before, you will call them into order. As my, as my kingdom military general and leader. That's the word of the Lord to me, Thomas Manton IV. It's the word of the Lord to you. I'm hearing it as from, the, from heaven's, heaven's voice, God's own voice to me, his voice, and then echoing it out to you. And you can echo that and receive that yourself. I, again, Isaiah 46, 9 to 13. A man will be called from a far country, even to the east. And the sign of the bird of prey from the east, the Egyptian eagle, as we've seen here. Prophetic confirming signs that we've seen those here in our meetings. They've come to our meetings. They've come to the house, come to the gardens. We've seen them as a sign confirming. Why would Isaiah talk about the thing about a man coming from far and then talk about a bird of prey in the middle of it? it it's, it's an additional thing. It wasn't, it wasn't necessary to make this statement, but it was a sign. And we've seen that sign because God knew that they would come. In our generation now, when we're here and alive and prophesying over nations of the world, that that sign would be fulfilled to confirm that we are the one, that I am even the one. Thomas Manton IV, that I'm the one that's been sent by God to prophesy to a people that we never knew before. It's happened, and it's happening, and it will happen more. I sent a message to someone. I said, I'm feeling a stirring that millions more people in the nation of Kenya will be touched by our voice. Millions more people around the world, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, to billions if it can even be, before we finish this life, that the Lord will use us. His anointing will flow and touch multitudes of people. So exciting. So very exciting. Such a great day to live. And, and the Lord says again, the greatest days are ahead of you, not behind you. I'm girding you up. I'm strengthening you up. I'm lifting you up. I'm wrapping you up. I'm remantling you. I'm refining you. I'm fixing things. I'm setting platforms. I'm setting stages. I'm making connections. I'm making productive relationships, says the Lord. You're going to see the flourishing of your work because my hand is in it. My hand is upon you, says the Lord. God says the day is great and the day is bright and the future is bright. Though gross darkness covers the earth, my light will be brighter and be seen upon you, according to Isaiah 60. Father, we thank you for the kingdom of yours coming and being advanced around the world and your will being done and manifesting and being advanced around the world through us. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that you're touching people to become partners of the work with me. 
God's telling people to tithe and to sow and to first fruit and to give offering. Uh, large even amounts. Maybe you have land. Maybe you have vehicles. Maybe you have buildings even, properties. I don't know. The Lord can talk to you and say, call Thomas Manton because I have, I have something he's doing that I'm having him do, and he can use that in the work of the Lord, in my work, in my mission, says the Lord. Connect on that level. Father, we open the, head, the, the, the floodgates. Let your presence is falling in right now. It's moving from here right now. Whatever oppression's been in this city, we rename the city the city of peace from being the city of chaos. We rename it being the city of loveliness and integrity from being the den of filth and sin and corruption. Thank you, Lord, that you're raising up real people to connect, to be networked together so greatly in this day and hour, greater than we've ever seen, even in times past. The greatest day is just right ahead of us. Thank you for the media airwaves. Thank you for the favor. Thank you for the boldness. Thank you for the bold people. Thank you for the courageous warriors. That's a key word that you're raising up to be a part of this movement. Thank you for the partners, financial partners, ministry partners. Thank you for preachers. Thank you for business people. Thank you for people excelling and advancing in their careers because of the touch of heaven by their productive partnership with me, God's prophet to the nations. Thank you, Lord, for the platforms that you're going to set and arrange and put forth. It's going to be greater than anything we've ever seen before. The presence of God is filling this place. Father, your work goes forward no matter what. We've seen it all the time. And we thank you for the advancement, the fire, the favor, the glory that's moving. Thank you for multitudes that will hear my voice and hear your voice through my voice now be touched and changed forever, to become kingdom-minded and kingdom-advancing people in the name of Jesus. Again, let thy will be done. Thank you. We bless our partners. I got a good report today from a businessman who's been a great partner for a long time. He says his business has greatly improved. Other people are writing me and telling me that of healings, they've been healed. Someone flew like 10,000 miles somewhere and their ear popped and then I prayed they're in South Africa right now. We prayed for them, and they instantly rose up healed. If you'd like, again, if you'd like that word from Psalm 107, I really took the, the really potent verses. Sometimes you read the whole thing. It's got a few negative things in between, how people went off, and it kind of dilutes your focus a little bit. I'm telling you, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I thought, I want the good verses of this. I'm not worried about the, re the rebels and the other people that will mess up because I'm not one of them. I'm not, I'm not in that equation. I'm in the blessing equation. So I said, I want the blessing verses. I want to extract the blessing of this. Not the context of the children of Israel, how they were carrying on. I'm not there. I wasn't there. That was thousands of years ago. I wasn't there. I'm not responsible. Not my circus, not my monkeys, as a Polish proverb. Not my circus, not my monkeys. You know, I'm not involved in that. That's another one's game. So that part we leave out. But the good stuff, what you were saying about healing, about delivering from destruction, about prospering, about helping business, about helping relationships. And it, blah, 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 I wrote it in the paragraph. If you'd like that, just WhatsApp me. Here's the WhatsApp number, plus 254-792-320-780. It'll be on the screen. Use my WhatsApp. We can also put you in our WhatsApp group. It's easy when I could just take something great the Lord has said or done or fulfilled or a message from the Lord that's so empowering and so enriching. We drop it in the group and everybody can partake of it. There's also a way to do a mass broadcast. We're going to be doing a lot more of that, even through other platforms and networks and more in the social media and more in other things in media that millions of people, the Lord said this, millions of people will hear, will hear you and listen and receive and be blessed. And many that I'll never meet in my life will be mentored online. The, the online thing is phenomenal. The internet is phenomenal. Father, we thank you for redeeming everything now, fixing everything now, and setting the stage for your word of power to flow out to multitudes of people. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Thank you for your greatness and your grace. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your empowerment. Thank you for your enrichment. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow. Thank you for your abundance. Thank you for your prosperity. Thank you, Lord, so much for all of it. For the nations of the world, for America, for Africa, for Kenya, for Europe, for Asia, for the Latin world, Central and South America, for the Middle East, for the Asian world, for the Orient, for the far Pacific Rim, for the islands of the sea, for Australia, the other continent, all around this globe. North America, South America, Central America, you're moving. Eastern Europe, all of Europe, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, all the way around, all the Mediterranean nations, all of the island nations, every place where there's people on planet Earth, you're releasing your word, Father, to touch them via online. Let the people that are skilled in that, the experts, come to me. If you have any skill in that area, I would welcome talking to you and see what we can do to reach millions of people with what he's saying. That's what's coming next. I'm prophesying. And that will happen. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing on this. Thank you, Lord, for the, the raising up of new leadership. You spoke that word also over Kenya, but you're speaking it over everywhere, America, Europe, all over the world, Asia, Latin world, Asian world, Oriental world, Arabic world, European world, Eastern European, Western European, America, Mexico, United States, Canada, all the African nations, all of them, all 53, I think it is, 53 nations in Africa. The power of heaven fallen on the African continent, the great motherland, cradle of civilization. Thank you for your greatness. And Father, what, you had, what I was saying before, to rebuke some people out of their mess. If someone takes offense at that, that's their problem. But you speak everything, even in that way, to redeem people out of their foolishness. You need to start to be a giver, a partner. Not necessarily with me, but however you're going to flow in that, you need to operate the laws of the kingdom. Now, if you want to be a partner with me, wonderful. I love you. I welcome you. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you every day. People that I, that I hear from, I think about them, I'm always interacting in my mind, my spirit, with the Lord for, for them to be blessed, and they're being blessed. One woman went from Kenya to America to study. She was always writing me every other day about troubles in her studies. Went on for two, three years. I answered every time she wrote. I never rolled my eyes. I never said, ah, oh, too many correspondences. No, not me. I prayed. I wrote back. She's so grateful. Now she's graduated with high honors, the, the courses, and she got hired on a great job, and she says, now I'm sending my tithe. She sent another one yesterday. And her family's getting blessed. They bought a plane ticket for the mother to come over to America from, from Kenya. So many things are happening. Great favor because of the connection. But see, this is a person that was serious. Even when they didn't send, uh, but, but requests that I felt the burden. I felt that to pray for this person. This person's going somewhere. The Lord told me that. And sure enough, they're there now. You have the opportunity for that, my friend. See preachers that go all around struggling so hard. They don't know the blessing factory is right here in Nairobi if they would just connect and listen and receive from this anointing, oh, everything would be different for them. But again, we carry on. People sometimes don't understand the level of things that's going on in my mind. They're looking at what they see in the surface, like we gotta do this, we gotta do that. I could be light years away in my mind, I'm dealing with other things in other continents, many things going on, people don't know how much we're carrying, how much of a load, how much of a burden. Not that it's a bad burden. I mean the burden of the Lord. How much is going on? Phenomenal. The greatest privilege in life is to be called by God. And I am absolutely thrilled and privileged, Lord, forever and ever. And thank you for the eternal blessing and the eternal reward. Nations being shaken and changed. Lord, raise up 
Also, more soul winners, people to win, people to Jesus, people to talk to people about Jesus, people to pray with people to receive Jesus. And for people to be raised up to be great, great kingdom people all over the world in Jesus' name. It is our place to take dominion. It's, it's God's commission to us to take dominion, to rise up. So you do that, my friend. You get busy doing it now in Jesus' name. I love you much. Talk to you again on the next broadcast. I'm Thomas Matthew IV. I wait to hear from you. Write to me. You want to partner. You want to connect. You want to sow. Do it. And our materials, again, like the book I was talking about, and other materials coming out, stay in touch. Let me see you in correspondence, and I will be praying for you. In Jesus' name, the Lord bless you richly. That's my prayer for you. And fix everything in your life for the better. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you much.